Welcome back to Small Caps. And now for something completely different, something that you guys out there may not have heard of because they only listed late last year on the ASX, been flying a little bit under the radar. The ASX code is KTG, company name KTIG. We'll get into that in a moment. Here joining me today is Adrian Smith, Managing Director of KTIG. Adrian, great to see you. What an interesting story you have. Thanks, Gary. It's wonderful to be here. Well, let's start off. Um, I'll, I'll just explain to, to our listeners, our viewers, that this is all about advanced welding technology. And the focus that I want them to look at is it's the technology behind welding and the market size, which is, in, I think, of interest for investors at the moment. You've only listed late last year on the ASX. You've recently done a capital raising, so you're you're well funded. You're not you, you know you're not going to the market saying we need to do a cap raise. You're you're there. Let's start with where did KTIG come from? And you've laid some good foundation. So let's just start with a little bit of background about the company and why investors should be looking at you now. Okay. So look, to me, KTIG is one of those great um, success stories of Australian technology. We The original work to develop keyhole welding um, was done in, in Australia, in fact, in Adelaide by CSIRO at their materials research. Um, they pioneered this work and were the first in the world to really look at um, welding thick pieces of metal. And that's really where our sweet spot is in a single pass. So traditionally, um, to be able to weld metal, you have to cut a V in it, put a little bead down, clean it, put another bead down, clean it and gradually fill up. So if you're oh. doing a, a couple of millimetre thick piece of steel, um, it requires multiple passes. And between each pass, you have to grind back, clean off the slag, do all the processes. So it's a very labour intensive and, uh, and, and time consuming activity. It uses a lot of um, things like filler rods to fill in, in the gaps, um, lots of gas, um, lots of consumables across the board. Uh, and also all of your quality problems come from each of those joints. So, you, you know, the molten pool is good, but the, each of them you have to, when you restart a new one, lay down a new one. If you haven't got it perfectly clean, if you don't get the exact, you know, temperature profiles, that's where you get your porosities and your inclusions and, and your fractures. And so you get your quality strength, especially your strength of your world problems. What we do differently is we can take a half inch thick piece of metal um, shows my age, sorry, 12 millimetres. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and with a single pass, without any edge preparation, just butt the two pieces of metal together, run the arc torch through it and weld it perfectly. Good That's Lord. What's and this was developed in Australia um, by Australian scientists in CSIRO. KT was a spin out from CSIRO. Uh, all the intellectual property was transferred into the KT entity about 10 years ago. Um, and it has further developed it from a science experiment into a commercial technology. And that's the exciting thing about it. Well, you just said 10 years. So, you know, it's been a long time in the making, but you're now listed, you're funded, and you're ready to go out and, I guess, do that sales acceleration and that development process. So let's talk firstly, because we love numbers, us, we investors, we love numbers. Um, in terms of sales acceleration, where are your markets? Because I know you, ma sorry, before we get into that, you manufacture down in Adelaide. So ladies and gentlemen, this is an Aussie manufacturing success story. So we need to support these guys. Um, yeah, 100% manufactured in Adelaide and shipped around the world from here. We love. You know what? I've always said we need to, to, to upscale down here in, in Australia. So well done you. Uh, in terms of sales acceleration, where's your biggest market? Where are you shipping to? Oh, look, I mean, our, our customers are the fabricators of the world, the people who um, weld metal together to make stuff, whether that be pipes or pressure vessels or nuclear waste containers or turbine rings for jet engines, you know, all of those sort of things. Um, and so it's reflective in where the world market is. So the, the dominant market is, is North America. Okay. Right? Um, and about two thirds of our sales go into North America at the moment, um, followed by Europe closely, um, which is about a third of sales. We don't sell into China and Asia, um, and that's a strategic decision we've made to avoid copying. Right. Um, so we don't do that sort of thing. And we sell a little bit in Australia being our home market, but we don't have the big manufacturing 
case of what they do in America. So if just for instance, you know, we run a, um, a pretty sophisticated CRM system and we've spent a lot of money on research of all the possible users of our product are. And, you know, we have over 7,000 um, in, in North America alone. And, and what's your penetration into the US market at the moment? Because you're only just getting started. Very, very tiny. You know, we've got all of that market ahead of us. It is a conservative market. It takes time. So if you look at the history of the company, um, it went from um, a really a science experiment when it first came out of CSIRO. They developed the technology, uh, did a lot of work, um, turned it into a product that was reliable and you could, you could you know, deploy in a factory and it isn't, isn't going to break and fall over. And then they um, uh, basically uh, marketed to early adopters because it, it is a conservative industry. Yep. It's definitely an industry that, you know, there are well-known techniques for doing things and they work. That's, there's no question about, you know, whether or not they can work. They do, however, rely on very highly skilled people. And that's a big problem for the industry. Um, the average out welding age is, you know, well into their 50s um, in the really? skilled uh, on a global basis, yeah. And so there's a shortage of skilled people um, and doing um, high-end welding, which is where we're targeted. You know, when, when we are not a solution that somebody buys in their backyard and does their stick welding, okay? Right. Um, we, our technology gets integrated with robotics for automated welding technologies. It's not a manual solution. So, okay. so we're at the top end of the market, both from a quality point of view and, and volume and gear like that. So somebody who's making, for instance, um, nuclear waste containers out of stainless steel, they're essentially big coffins for want of a better word. Um, you know, weld quality is absolutely paramount. So they don't risk that with manual welding because that's when you, you know, um, yes, a very highly skilled welder can do a great job, um, but there are difficulties in terms of repeatability and reliability. And if they've been out the night before or, and things like that, you can get false. So they get a lot of rejection rates and a lot of um, rework. Which, which costs money. But do, oh, do, in, in using your technology or welding technology, because you'd said that there's a skills, you know, that the challenge yeah. is the, the welders are getting older. Uh, mm -hmm. People aren't necessarily going into that, uh, into that industry. So does your technology take away the need to be highly skilled because it's a matter yep. of pushing some buttons? Is that right? Absolutely. So there is, a, there is a high lot of skill in setting it up um, yep. and, and, you know, setting up your automation. You, you, know, you need your robotics um, people and your programmers and gear like that. And there are companies who do that automation. But once it's been set up and the world has been integrated into it, um, it's, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, put a piece of metal in, push the button. So you can get it down to a, a relatively low skilled um, uh, production operator as opposed to a high skilled welder. Now, Adrian, um, you've been flying a little bit under under the radar. You haven't been out there, you know, saying, come look at us. Was that a deliberate strategy to make sure that you had a good, solid foundation before you turned around and said to investors, listen, we're now solid, we're going forward, and there's a massive market for what we do uh, going forward? Absolutely. So, you know, um, when we were, uh, before, we, before we listed, you know, we were, we're struggling for capital. So it was a very much a focus as, as all startup organizations are. Um, so we were very focused on getting um, blue ribbon testimonial customers that we could use, working very closely with them, making sure the technology was robust so that when we scaled out, we weren't gonna have a whole bunch of recall problems or you know quality problems in our, our equipment that would, would hurt us in the marketplace. And we were selling into the early adopters. I mean, it, it's absolutely fair to say um, we were up against a conservative industry that didn't necessarily want to see the change and we needed to get some flagship clients. So that was the early days of what we were doing. And, um, you know, that was before my time, but the team did that very, very successfully. I was brought on and have come in really now to push the foot on the accelerator and to scale. So what we're focusing on now is not the technology. Technology is great. It right. works. It's brilliant. We've got, you know, big names like Siemens, GEC, um, the big... Um, fabrication shops in, in Europe and uh, in America who are using our technology and love it. Um, that's not the issue. For our, the issue is um, how do we scale distribution channels and support channels, you know, just things, simple things like, you know, in-country spare supplies so that, you know, when something does break, um, it's, it's rare, but it does happen, 
um, they're going to be back online working, you know, 12 hours because we can ship something locally rather than from the other side of the world. Yeah, that um, makes having sense. Having a direct sales force, having training and um, sales um, support engineers in country. So that work, that initial piece of work that you have to do to get your welding solution integrated in with your automation, your robotics uh, and your other equipment and get the programming of the paths and everything so that it is a, just an operator who pushes the button. You know, we, we've got local people who can help you with that rather than having to fly in a team from Australia and all of the complications, especially nowadays. Especially now. Yeah. Um, uh, with things. So, you know, so ours is all about um, localising and globalising the business. And that's where we're focused at the moment. One of the big issues for a lot of uh, these welding companies out there is the sort of the power and the gas costs. And I just wanted to bring this up that in using your technology, that, that co the, the, the costs of getting these things produced goes, is quite stunning in terms of the savings for your end client. Is that correct? Yeah, um, it, it very much depends on the application. If, if um, you know, our target applications, as I said, are, are thick pieces of metal. They're not, they're not thin. And thick pieces of metal mean that you don't just do one single world, you do multiple worlds. You have to prep the etches so that you've got access. So you, you don't butt two pieces of metal up like that. You cut a V in them and you have to machine the V and, and all of that sort of thing. Then you fill a little layer and then build up, build yeah. up and clean it in between. And all of that takes time and multiple passes. So the amount of time that we take for a single pass um, is, uh, in terms of art time, is, is comparable to what it would be for, for every one of those single passes. But a good, a thick piece of metal, um, you might have 10, 15 passes and right. 10, 15 cleaning cycles between each one. And you have to heat, let it cool, grind off all the problems then heat it up again, let it cool, grind off all the problems. So phenomenal time savings. You know, we, we have customers who are um, doing things with 90% of their costs and time removed. Well, it, big numbers. That's, that's, that's massive numbers, massive numbers. Uh, quick, quick question, where in Europe uh, is it being adopted? Um, it's being used uh, in, in England uh, very much for the, uh, uh, the well, I suppose I can speak that, the uh, nuclear um, confinement, so the uh, decommissioning they're doing of, of Sellafield um, uh, nuclear power station at the moment, they, they're using it to build all of the um, containers for the waste from that decommissioning process. It's being used, and we have a, a number of um, pipe and pressure vessel manufacturers in continental Europe who are using it. All right, let's dig down into it, the investor land now. <clears throat> right now, you, uh, you, you listed in late 2019, we're coming up to just about a year that you've been in existence on the ASX. Why do you think this is a good proposition for investors to put their hard earned money into KTIG right now? Um, well, we, to me, the, the technology is a no brainer. We have, yep. we have excellent technology that has huge advantages. It is patented, it is unique. We are the pioneers in it. Um, there are, you know, the, the uh, competition in the welding, which is with traditional, I mean, you know, who are, who are threatened. We are a, um, for those welders out there who happen to be listening, I mean, this is a category killer for plasma. There is no logical reason why you would plasma weld compared to, compared to this. So we've, we've done the hard yards of developing up the technology and we're really at the stage of a company now that's putting its foot on the accelerator from a sales and distribution graph. So, you know, so we're anticipating significant growth um, both in revenue and in profitability over the next 18 to 24 months. So we think it's a great time to jump on board because it's only going to go up from here. It's only going to go up from here. But um, in, in terms of that US market and that European market, are those the two over the next 18 to 24 months? Is that there the are So what we, we've recently made some announcements. Um, we, you know, we actually put a um, direct sales force into into uh, America now, and that's, that's, that's going great guns. Um, it's early days yet, but we expect that to turn into revenue numbers, you know, um, in the next, uh, next quarters. Um, it, that's, we're very, very happy with uh, the progress that's been made there. We've signed um, distribution agreements with uh, one of the leading uh, welding automation companies. So, that, and they're already shipping systems using our technology into, the, into their customer base. And uh, we, our aim 
uh, now is to scale that um, greatly. So we will be doing a lot more distribution agreements with welding automation people, um, with the welding shops. Um, where I think direct sales force will be putting in, in the near future technical support, direct technical support into the US. And then we plan to do that into Europe in the new year. Lot, lots of upside. I've got to ask this question. Uh, it's patented technology. Is there anything else close to this out there or are you confident that you are the only ones that can, you know, bring down those costs and create this in, you know, as an investor, that's what I'd like to know, you know. Oh, look, uh, there are other people trying to come up with other solutions for keyhole type welding, absolutely. Um, but nobody's matched us yet. And so you're out. I have, an, I have a very active R&D program to keep the gap there. So first mover advantage and ad advancing into the US. And as you said earlier, it's you're only scraping the surface at the moment. So the, mm -hmm. the, I guess the, the advantage for investors now is you're getting in at the early stage. Yeah, absolutely. Our, our challenges are professionalizing our sales and distribution, not our technology. Any final comments for our listeners out there, Adrian? Um, I, uh, no, I, I'm, I've only just joined the company in a, as managing director, but uh, I spent a lot of time doing due diligence. I have a history in, in industry and manufacturing. And when I was doing my due diligence, talking to people, I went to people who um, I would consider to be experts in this field um, was uh, about welding. And they all looked at it and said to me, wow, um, if this is done right, this can be a, a, a killer. And, um, and that's what got me motivated. Well, we wish you all the best on the journey. I'm sure we'll be talking to you again in the new year and see how you're impacting those markets over there. In the meantime, thanks for joining us on Small Caps today. Thanks, Kerry. Really enjoyed it. Bye.